Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on FlossTube, but also on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. It is the last Sunday before we go back to school on Friday. So that's somewhere at the end of, the, of August with a bank holiday tomorrow. So that's where we are. Even though I don't know quite where we are, it's roughly where we are. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> not much has happened this week. I've just been catching up on a bit of school work doing bits and bobs. It's one of those summers you look back and you think, well, I know I've done lots of things, but I can't remember any of them. And where has the time gone? <laughs> if I had my six weeks again, what would I have done differently? Um, and I think it's quite difficult. I really needed to rest. I'm quite disappointed with the number of things I've managed to do kind of in the house and get jobs done and finishes done and, go places and do X, Y, and Z, but I really just needed a rest. Um, I guess I shouldn't be too hard on myself for that. So anyway, let's have a look and see. I've had a pretty reasonable stitchy week, not too bad. I have filled out my book of days <laughs> and there's all sorts of stuff just falling out of the bottom of it. There we go. So there we are. Not that you can probably read it from there. I have only really worked on two things since I last saw you because I had one of those um, those times where I just couldn't put something down. Sorry, I'm just going to chuck all these things back in the back of the book of the days because otherwise I'll lose them. Yeah, I, I just couldn't put something down. So... Um, I had I had to get that finished and oh sorry just paused you and even before I got other other stuff done other jobs done I just had to get it finished um and the thing that I was working on was where's the chart there's the chart autumn by the Cricut collection now I started stitching this on a piece of 32 count that I'd hand dyed myself um quite a long time ago I haven't done any dyeing for ages and I really I really wanted to do some over the summer but I just haven't again gotten around to it so this is my finish now I showed you this last week and I'd got the N the M and the U done and I just kind of blistered straight on straight through and got it all done I really, really enjoyed it. I used the called for colours, all in the DMC, except for, there's a fancy floss called for in this um, reed bed here, and a fancy floss called for in the tree, the orange leaves. And I didn't have the fancy flosses that it calls for because they are, Uh, silken colours, autumn bouquet and prairie grass. So I didn't have those. So I thought, well, I'll just pick something that I do have. So I ended up using Weeks Dye Works Kudzu. Is it Weeks Dye Works? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Kudzu for that one. And I used, I think it's Classic Colour Works Fallen Leaf. It's either Classic Colour Works or week's dye works but it's called fallen leaf for the orange but it's just a mottled orange any kind of mottled orange or any kind of variegated green will probably will probably do for those so that's it i am going to finish it just flat not as a flat fold um where i want to put it it's just going to lean up against something so i'm literally going to finish it flat um put a backing onto it, um, so uh, wrap it around a board, put a board backing on with a, another fabric mat on the back, and then um, put a bit of trim, probably a bit of cording around the outside, and just finish it like that, I think. Unless a frame catches my fancy. I've just ordered a couple of frames, actually, um, which I'll show you when they come in. And if they're nice, they were reasonably priced, actually. If they're nice, I may get a frame for it 
but I've also got to remember there's four of them. Speaking of the others, a very lovely lady contacted me, her name's Nikki, um, and said, did I want to borrow her copy of the Cricut Collection Winter? Because she hadn't stitched it yet, but she was also not going to get around to stitching it for a little while. Um, and so she sent it down to me and I've got her address to send it back to her. She's from Cumbria. And she also included some lovely threads, which was super, super kind of you, Nikki. Thank you. Shutter Green, which when I looked at it actually would have been a really nice choice for the variegated floss on, um, on the, the previous one. Um, Tiger's Eye. She's like a brown daffodil, bright yellow, and bandana, classic colour works bandana. So thank you so much for those. That was lovely, a little extra there. Thank you. And then I couldn't obviously wait to get started. I had a piece of fabric, 32 count, um, left over from, it was the second half of the Halloween project that I've only just finished. And so I've got a little start on it. I would have done a bit more, except I can't find the threads. I was working on it yesterday. Went to pick it up this morning. I'm wonky, I look like I'm shutting a door. Um, I went to pick it up and can't find the threads. So I've looked down the back of the chair, I've looked in, so I've either put them in a project bag somewhere that's nothing to do with this project. So I'm gonna to have to go through and go through them all because I haven't got a spare of the, the colour that's going to become the tea. So it's not like I can even get on with doing it because the tea is the next thing that I need to put in. The other thing that I don't have is it recommends using um, cryonic blending filament with the white for things like the snowman no point holding that up because they're not there yet. The snowman, the snowflakes and things like that. Um, I don't think I've got any of that. I know I've got a little box of Krynix somewhere, but where they are, I've no idea. Um, I normally refer to it as like devil's backside hair. Um, so try to use it as little as possible. So I don't know. I, I'll have a look around and see what else I can find that might fit the bill. You're supposed to stitch it with one strand of white. Is it one strand of white? Yeah, one strand of white and then one strand of the um, the Krynik. So we'll see. I can work my way along once I find the threads um, and do all the letters and then I can go back and do all of the other bits. So I've kind of got a stormy, stormy blue to do that on. I love it. I absolutely love it. So those are the two things that I have stitched on this week. So that pretty much is the stitching. Now, have I got other things for you? Of course I have, of course I have. I have got the winners of the Crow's Feet Stitching Competition. I have got some exciting information about a new planner. Um, I have got my plans for Sampler September. I've got some haul. And I've got one of these. So as always, I will save that till the end, just in case you are not interested in watching me eat food. <laughs> what a funny thing to say. Right, let's do the winners of the competition. So Ruthie from Crow's Feet Stitching has got two new designs out and we had a competition for these two weeks ago because I always do like to let them run for two weeks. The first one was Elizabeth Moore. Now this is her second sampler. Her first sampler was a marking sampler. Both the charts are included in this pack. I'm just trying to see if I can find a picture of them both together. There they are. So both charts are included in this pack. And the winner of that was Shirley Gies. Sorry if I've just murdered your surname there, Shirley. Um, but I put your comment at the top there. If you can drop me an email or a message on Instagram, then I can get Ruthie to send out your, your chart by PDF for you. 
Um, so if you message me by email, obviously I'll have your email address. If you message me on Instagram, please do drop me your email address in that message. And then the second one is Ellen Berry. There was me thinking that I would be able to read it backwards, but I couldn't. Um, that's her little sampler there. Now you get the full chart for the sampler in this, plus you get some smalls. So you get the ability to make some pin cushions um, from the patterns on the bottom there. Um, let me see if I can just show you those. There we go. Um, and the winner of this was Susan Beckley. Beckley? I can't, don't trust my own handwriting. Susan Beckley. So I've put your comment up again, Susan, if you can um, email me, comment on Instagram, somehow, some way, get in touch with me, send a carrier pigeon, plane across the sky, something like that. I will then get your charts out to you. So congratulations to you too. Now, before I move on any further, I just want to mention a couple of floss tubers. Crafty Stitchers have released a video. It's been their first one for a few months now. They've both had a little few things going on you know life in general but it was so nice to see them back so nice to see them back now I know they're not making any promises about when they might come back again but if you haven't watched them it's definitely worth going and having a look and I'm also so pleased to see that Just So Sherry is getting loads and loads of views loads of subscribers because she's that so I'll put the links down for those two go and have a watch of those I'm just trying to think if I've watched anybody else now, I've not done a lot of floss tube watching this week. It's been somewhat bereft, shall we say. I did, however, watch this lady's floss tube. Her name is Laurie, um, and she has a floss tube channel. Uh, and I can't remember the exact name of it. It's something like My Crazy Life. Sorry, I've got a big fingerprint on this, and it's all I can see. It's like this big thumb <laughs> over my eye. Um, and now I met Laurie at Stitch London last last year and she was with um, Kerry and Caroline from Roxy Floss and Evertotes. Um, now they don't live, they don't live in the same country, but they were, they were sort of there as a package. Um, so they seem to know one another. So I got chatting and I got chatting to Laurie as well. She's a lovely lady. Um, anyway, she messaged me a few months back now saying that she wanted to put together a planner um, for stitches and would I provide a free chart and she was said uh, she would send me a copy of the planner once it was done so of course yeah no problem so I used one of my samplers that I've got upstairs and I did I took a few little motifs from it and turned it into a little pink cushion and sent it to her anyway she has released her planner so I'm going to show you the planner there are 11 designs in this chart in this chart in this book now I think the brief that we were given was 60 by 60 so I think all of the designs are less than uh, are 60 by 60 or less so they're all small pin cushions things like that I'll tell you who is in the, the planner now I can't show you because they're just the charts so I can't show you what the designs are going to look like but I am planning on stitching mine up and um, and I will show you what mine looks like when it's stitched. So, the people involved in the planner. Um, Kelly from Cosford Rise Stitchery, Ellen from Maximum Cross Stitch, uh, Becca from Sambury Stitches, Kate from Kate Stitcher Designs, uh, Julie from Silver Stitch Designs, uh, Pat from Foxtail Fibres, Deanna from Darling and Whimsy Designs, Chrissy from Finally a Farm Girl, me, um, Patty from Four Boys and an ML Girl Designs, not one I'm familiar with, gonna have to lock them up, and Michelle G from Benny Stitchy. So, this came a couple of days ago. Now, what's the first thing you do when you get a planner? You put stickers in it. I had to see, I knew it was a good planner, but I had to see how it took a sticker. So my front cover is a little bit different now because I've added some birds to mine. So this is how it comes. The greenery and the yellow bits are the front design. The birds are my, are my stickings. So let me walk you through. Nice 
page to say this planner belongs to and again that's my sticker <laughs> really nice really nice paper i love the fact that it's ring bound i do like this but there's a couple of things that i would have liked about it even better if it was ring bound and if it had a few extra pages for a few extra things so let me show you like i say when you get a new planner you've got to see how it takes a sticker if it doesn't suit a sticker then it's dead in the water as far as i'm concerned so this is what it looks like so each month and again stickers are my own each month you get a monthly planner where you can jot down what you've been doing around the outside is all bullet um, journaling style so you can write that however you want and then at the back of each month you get a nice big page for notes sales challenges and finishes and I really like that extra page then you get your one of your freebie designs and then we start again so there's February and apart from the F I haven't stickered it up and then you get the same again so that's what you get kind of per month I'll just also show you July because I've stickered July up because in July we normally go to see Gifford Circus and this year I ordered well this year I bought a patch from Giffords when I was there and then I realized I'd lost it out of my handbag it was in the front pocket of my handbag and I'd taken something out and I'd lost it so I ordered a new one online and I realized then that they had stickers so I bought some stickers and I've stickered up July because we should be going to see Giffords again in July for their new show. This is the show that we went to last year. So by the time I get to July, I will be looking forward to seeing that again. Anyway, your months progress like that and you've got freebies all the way through. I'm just going to show you actually one of the designs because Kelly had actually stitched hers up. Most of them don't have a stitch picture, but that's Kelly's one. She had stitched it up. She wins. <laughs> She's the most prepared of us all. And then at the back, at the back, we have 2025 calendar, which is excellent because a lot of retreats and things like that, you have to book in 12 months in advance. You've got a double page up for up to 50 star, uh, 50 whips. <laughs> Optimistic. I should be photocopying those two pages and then sticking them onto the next two pages. So you've got a few pages of for just notes and then you've got a section for retreats. So you've got all the information about the retreat what happens in the retreat week or however long you're going for. That could be your run up to the retreat, things you need to get done. If it's a week, just a weekend retreat or if it's a week's retreat, lucky you. And then you've got your shopping list, your packing and in the neighborhood, if you get the chance to go out and have a, have a mooch around, and most importantly, table friends. I am terrible at getting the information, contact information of people I need. I, I never know when to do it. I never know when to do it. I'm always like, do I do it right at the beginning? And then I leave it to the end and then I forget. And so you've got two or three retreat spaces at the back there. And then you've got right at the back, stitchy kindness so you can keep a list of all the stitchy kindness that you receive um, either at the retreats or through the year so I think that is fabulous vendors now you can buy it at Evertote or you can buy it at Colorado Cross Stitcher if you are in the UK don't jump the gun just quite yet um, I was talking with Laurie um, and there's a possibility we might be able to get a UK vendor so if you're interested in this in the uk i would suggest just hang fire hold your guns keep your powder dry just for another couple of weeks or so and then i might have some information for you 
Um, if, it, if it can't happen, then I'll let you know. But fingers crossed, we'll be able to, to work something out and there will be a UK vendor. Because I would imagine that's going to be quite pricey to have shipped, especially overseas. So fingers crossed. Freebie is owls and acorns. Can't really see it. Let's put a picture up. It's by Blue Ribbon Designs. Now I love Blue Ribbon Designs and I've only recently found out that they've got an Etsy shop, um, which does PDFs. So check them out because they've got some beautiful, even like Halloween designs as well. So have a look, have a look at that. Now, I forgot, I should have said, Laura, you've done a fantastic job. I love it. I really love it. I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to use a paper planner. I was quite into my Excel spreadsheet and I've really enjoyed this and the whole sticker process. And I'm really gonna enjoy that. Right, plans. Plans, plans, plans for Santa September. Now, I have got three models that I really need to get my backside into gear with. The first one, and this is what I'm going to concentrate on in Santa September. I'm going to do other things as well because I want to finish my winter. I want to do other bits and bobs. So I will probably do samplers in the week and something different at the weekend. Maybe. We'll see. My first sampler that I want to get stitched up, and I have this already charted, except for just right at the very bottom, is Susan Steele. Now this is my Norfolk. Now, it's probably been a while since you've seen her, and you might have seen her in the frame. Um, she is out of the frame for charting, and I am not going to do anything other than put her back in the frame because she is almost on the very, very fr most fragile, thin, try not to touch the front of it, gauze. It's not, well, it's not gauze, but it's very, very fragile, thin, dainty um, fabric. And so there's nothing really that I am going to get from taking her off and she's sewn on so she is going to be finished charting and then back in her frame safe and sound as quickly as possible so I really need to get on and do that I've got the fabric this is a half of lakeside vintage buttercream I think it is I think it is I will put it underneath if it's not because um, I'm doing it on 36 count so I think she's going to be just over a fat quarter because the stitch that she's on is tiny it's 46 or or less more more 46 or more so that is There we go. Fettled, somewhat fettled. <laughs> somewhat fettled, there we go. And the threads are here. I've got DMC because there's no variation or variegation really to be seen in the threads there. And I think they will look fabulous on there and give me that really kind of muted light. I can see underneath those parts where I can lift the, the sampler and I can see underneath and the colours are maybe one shade brighter than they are on the front. So I've kind of gone with that when I've picked my colours. But this has been waiting in the wings for a long time. Something else that's been waiting in the wings for a long time, which I have charted, but have not gone with the model, is this. This is Anne Arkley's from, is it Stamfordham? Yeah, Stamfordham up in the north, northeast I think. Now I have got a sort of collaboration going on with this with um, Kerry from Roxy Fosco. Um, now I was 
I'm thinking that both of us probably would have hoped that I would have <laughs> had it done a bit better than I have done. Um, but if you've followed me for any length of time, you'll know that last year at school was <laughs> a particularly, um, particularly difficult one. Um, and so, it's just a bit of condensation. There we go. Just leave that there. Um, it was a particularly difficult one. It just kept throwing things at me. And so I didn't get on with it as well as I'd hoped, but I have it charted, I've got the threads, I've got the fabric. And so sample September is gonna be me getting started on that. And then this is gonna be my Black Sample November. Now I've done Black Sample November for the last two years running and I have a bit of a, a soft spot for Black Sample November because Jacob originally contacted me when he first launched Black Sample November um two years ago and he asked whether i had anything that i would be able to sort of put forward for black sample in november and i didn't but i had an idea going around my head and that was nessie mitchell and that's kind of what kicked off my confidence in in designing and reproducing um needlework so i like to do it and i found this one now this is probably the most sorry state of any sample. Well, the sample itself isn't too bad. The frame is a bit, a bit, well, it's terrible. Um, once I've taken it apart, I will be getting rid of the frame and, and putting her in something else. Now, I will tell you what first attracted me to her. She is in a bit of a sorry state, but I do like her. So this is Charlotte Jekyll. Now, it hasn't got a year on it, as far as I remember. No. The thing that attracted me to this is the lace border. It reminds me of lace, and it's done using a combination of thread and wool. So can you see at the top here where you've got like these darker patches? That's because it's done with wool. And these bits that look lighter are done in thread. Most of the stitching is just done in thread. It's quite light. But the wool comes in in the border and in these little motifs here and here. So she's not a completely black sampler, but she's the majority black sampler. And I think that counts. So... When I reproduce her, what I want to achieve is that look. I want to be using one thread in certain places to give that more, more sort of sparse look that she's got. And I want to be then using two threads or a thicker thread to give the lace effect of the border. And I don't know if you can see that at the top. So that's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be interesting to chart. Um, you can see she's kind of faded along this bottom corner. It's gone kind of more green, but she will be done in black um, using a combination of one strand and two strands, probably on something like either 32 count or 28 count, something where you're going to see the difference between two strands and one strand. So... There's that. Now, haul. I've got a little bit of haul before we get onto the try a treat box. Now, I'm just gonna move the Norfolk out of the way. Every time I move, I kind of go. There's always that face. Right, what have I got here? I have got some fabric and some charts. This I bought from a stash unload. It's a bit darker than it looks. And I'm gonna to have to go back and see. It's a 28 count, I think. I should have took a screenshot of it, taken a screenshot of it, but I liked it. 
and I th I've got an idea of what I want to stitch on it as well. Um, so I have a feeling it was a silk weaver piece and it feels like it's silk weaver pieces that I've had in the past. I have also got my thread club from Patchwork Rabbit. This is Fibre on a Whim Cappuccino. So, <coughs> <coughs> hmm. I haven't even got onto the treat box yet. Um, beautiful sampler colour, love, love, love. Did you know that Patchwork Rabbit, once they, <coughs> two seconds. <coughs> I feel like I inhaled dust. I think Charlotte Jekyll's trying to kill me. Oh. There we go. Did you know, Patrick Rabbit, once they have sent out all of the Fabric of the Month clubs, they always over-order. So there's always some on the website to, to snatch up if you're not in the Fabric of the Month club. Tempted, tempted to snatch up another piece of that because I like it. Um, I picked up two charts from Arts and Designs. This is T-Rex by Silver Creek Samplers. And there was two, there's two dinosaur stitches by Silver Creek Samplers. And I can't remember what the other one is called, but Talking Dog Stitcher, um, Rachel was stitching it at the retreat that I just went to. So I knew I had to try and find them and I can only find this one. So I'll put a picture of the other one up and I'll keep looking for the other one. Um, this was one of my picks for Needlework Marketplace Online Expo Mabob and Arts and Designs had it. Um, I also noticed that Jeff P. Smith had got it as well. Um, this is Spooky Autumn Smalls by The Blue Flower. Love that. Love, love, love. And then I grabbed another one by The Blue Flower. This one came from Jeff P. Smith. So, in fact, let me just see if I can just take out Trudy's note. Trudy always writes a nice note a nice little paper. This is called Happy Campers. And there we go. I'm sure you've seen it anyone before. So even if it's a little bit glary, it's not too bad. I love that. I love that. And this bit at the bottom reminds me of Kellerman's as well from Dirty Dust. <laughs> love that. How big is it? Does it tell me without? I was wondering if it would fit on my fox and rabbit. I'll have to have a look. I'll have to get the calculator out. I also got my Fox and Rabbit um, Fabric of the Month, but I'm going to leave that in just a minute because then if you've not got yours yet, although I posted them out, you should have got them. Um, you can you can see. Now, I bought another sampler. She's, she's lovely. I just wish somebody hadn't tried to wash her. This is Amelia Walden. 1866 and she's big she's a big girl but you can see somebody there has tried to wash her but I still love her now when she arrived she was so bright I was like is that an antique sampler is it even an antique sampler and the fabric feels right it you know old fabric it's not it looks like every other piece of fabric that I've got it's probably a 28 count it's probably quite big and I was like well why is it so bright well it's never been in a frame it's been hemmed so it's never been in a frame so it's not faded and then I started to look closely at the thread and I was like that doesn't look like normal thread. It doesn't feel like normal thread. This is silk. This has been stitched in silk. And I thought, that's quite unusual to be stitched that big in silk. And then I did my research. Amelia Walden is from Coventry, or from the Coventry area. Uh, Foles Hill and at the time she stitched this 
her older brother was a silk trader. So that kind of helps me to think where she got the silk from. And then I did a bit more research and both her and her younger sister became silk weavers because that whole area of Coventry is very, very famous for silk, silk ribbon and that sort of thing. But I just love her and I can forgive the little run of some of the colours. It says, let your companions be the wise, the pious wise and just let be the wise, the pious wise and just and place your confidence in God and in him only trust. Now, as you know, I'm not very religious, but I do like those butterflies. I love those fruit bowls. I love that big house, which actually I then went on to look at the factories, the silk weaving factories. They look exactly like that big red house. It, I don't think it's a house. I think it's a silk factory. So there we are. I don't know quite when I'll get around to her. She's big. <laughs> she's big, <laughs> but she's beautiful. Now, this is the fox and rabbit fabric and it comes with a question. This is 36 count cacao and it's a beautiful, rich, deep brown, almost like a pinky brown. What do I stitch on it? I can do yellow tone browns, so sort of browns with an undertone of yellow, but I struggle with browns with an undertone of pink or to me a bit pinky. So help me, help me, what should I stitch on this? There's something that would be perfect on this because it's beautiful, beautiful fabric. So if you've got any ideas about what I could stitch on this, please let me know. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right. If you do not want to hang around and explore the treat box with me, then I will say cheerio to you now. If you do, let's have a look. I've got a drink. So we are going this time, let me just show you it because I've normally unwrapped these. We are going to Thailand. So, as always, you get a recipe, uh, some information about Thailand, a little postcard. Ness loves these. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Now, I'm not sure we're going to get through all of this tonight. I might save some of it for next week. So, strawberry flavour Pocky. I'm sure we've had Pocky before. They look like those little Mikado sticks. Mikado, is that right? Or is that a, a musical? Okay, roasted seaweed stick. Now I like roasted seaweed. I've been hankering after some seaweed for a while. Um, coffee sweeties. Not a chance I'm going to eat those. I don't like anything that's flavoured with coffee. Um, I'll give them to Chris. Crispy crepes. Biscuits. One of those jelly things. What flavour is that meant to be? It's a so it's called soccer jelly. But it says it's in the shape of a soccer ball. I don't think that is that version. I think that's probably going to be pineapple. I'll give that a whirl. Another one of those. Sweet basil flavoured crisps. Um, natural dried banana. I'm not a big fan of. I like banana milkshake and I like banana foam bananas. Other than that, I'm not a fan. A wafer, the ubiquitous chocolate wafer that's in everything. That's them again. Mini pineapple biscuits. So they look nice. Oh! Now, I think we've had this before. Squid seafood snack. Hot and spicy. So we'll give it a whirl. I might get through. There's some things I'm not going to... <laughs> Let's start off with the roasted seaweed. Now, 
Yeah, let's start off with the roasted seaweed. See. So it's just like a seaweed roll. Last time I had one of these, one of them went in my eye. 100% veg sharing, good to know. That's nice. I'm gonna be covered. Love that. Really like that. Sweet basil flavoured crisps. Just checking for a uh, health warnings. I tell you what it smells like. I used to take kids away on expedition for like a month. And when you unpacked your rucksack at the end of the month, that's what it smelled like. It's not hideous. Necessarily, it's basil flavour. It's got a bit of chilli in it. I do prefer the Asian boxes, I have to say. Because otherwise, sometimes it just turns into like a parade of biscuits. But these, this company is fab. This is these are great. You get um, all the information there, and then you get. A way of like scoring them so these are great for like a family evening things like that um i do have a code an affiliate code which gets you a discount off your first box i think it's i've lost a bit of paper i think it's 15 percent either 10 or 15 percent but i'll put all the information below they're really good they are really good right i'm going to save the squid seafood till last because i think that might finish me off let's have a look at these mini pineapple biscuits oh look they're individually wrapped looks like a fancy jammy dodger doesn't it let's have a go mini biscuit with pineapple jam now do i eat it like i eat jammy dodger and bite the top off oh god <laughs> Ooh, now that is a taste sensation. I might have to hide those. They are really good. 260 calories, but it doesn't say in how many biscuits. Well, it does, I just can't read the language it's written. Ah, per serving, 140 calories per half a pack. Why do you take ages to unwrap the damn things? No wonder. I can recommend those, highly recommend those. Oh, crispy crepes with ginger filling. I hate ginger, but I'll do it for you. It's when you go to someone's house and they offer you a biscuit. And the biscuit brown's got a ginger biscuit in it somewhere, lurking at the bottom, and everything else tastes like ginger. Lovely texture, but it's leaking ginger. Oh, it's really gingery as well. Are we giving this a go? I think you just bite the end off or twist the end off to do it away from the needle work Michelle. That's nice. I 
Oh, it's raining. Nice. Oh, go on then. Might as well. I'll have one of these as well. I'm sure these are just like a little, yeah, they are. <laughs> Try that again. Are all my sticks broken? Let's try again. Fingers crossed. Ah! They all seem to be broken. All stuck together. Oh well. Share the happiness. I have to get them out of the box to do that. Right. Cleanse the palette. It is really hammering down on them. Now I'm sure I've had this before. Oh no, I Oh, have I? I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing when it comes like individually wrapped like that. Squid seafood snack, hot and spicy. It looks a bit like um, crackling. <laughs> That's odd. It's like really hot and spicy, it's stuck to the packet. And then the tail end of it you get like a fish a fishy taste it's not that pleasant she says it's stuck together That's supposed to be fun, is it? Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's a snack. It looks a bit like porn, uh, pork crackling. And the reason I say, Ness and I have been addicted this week to watching Is It Cake? That really annoying American show where the guy thinks he's um, Jim Carrey. But yeah, it's like, is it cake? Is that, ha, actually. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. That's too hot. I'll see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers.